Welcome to flight training. I'm your instructor, Captain Molina, but you can just call me Jess. This session, we'll get started with some basic controls. Sound good? First things first, let's get familiar with your surroundings. Don't worry. I've got the stick while you get your bearings. Out your side windows, you can see we have great visibility over Sedona today. This is Red Rock territory. Beautiful, isn't it?
more long, you won't even need a co-pilot. Until then, if you want help with the radio or checklists or simply flying the plane, I'll be here. You can pass me the controls when you're ready to finish your session, or keep flying. It is a great day after all. control. Good job. Today we're talking about attitudes of flight, how your plane is oriented relative to the horizon. If you look outside, you can see the cockpit is just about four inches below the horizon line. We're flying straight with a decent rate of speed. This is the cruise attitude. Let's see how it reads on your instruments. Take a look at the attitude indicator. As the name implies, it shows your current attitude. The white line is the horizon, with the sky above and the ground below. That orange element in the middle, aligned with the horizon, that's your plane. Just like we saw outside, our current attitude reads pretty much straight and level. Okay, now let's see how much power the engine's generating. Check your tachometer. Looks like we're pushing around 2300 revolutions per minute. Combined, attitude and engine RPMs translate to aircraft performance. which leads us to your airspeed indicator. Now, last but not least, check your altimeter. To figure out your altitude, you always want to read the small needle first. That's how many thousands of feet up you are. Then on to the big needle for the hundreds. With our current attitude and power output, we're holding a speed of 90 knots and a stable altitude of 6,000 feet. But that's about to change. Take the stick when you're ready. Pull back slightly on the yoke to raise the nose just above the horizon line. About two inches. Make sure you don't pitch up too much, or the angle will be too steep to create lift. And without enough lift, we'll stall. Are climbing. Welcome to the climb attitude. See how it shows up on your attitude indicator and tachometer? According to your altimeter, we're gaining altitude. But we're losing airspeed even at full throttle, proving you can't avoid basic physics while making a climb. Okay, before we go on, let's get back to a cruise attitude. Ease up on the yoke and aim your nose just below the horizon. Then throttle back down to 2300 RPMs. Nice job. We're now set up with the same attitude and power we had at the top of our lesson. Next up is the descent attitude. Start by reducing your RPMs to 1800. Then drop the plane's nose a bit further below the horizon. As expected, with a nose down attitude, our altitude is decreasing while our speed is picking up. Why don't you get us back to a cruise attitude and we'll hit the last part of our lesson. There we go. Now that we know how to cruise, climb, and descend, let's talk about the turn attitude. Gently pull the yoke left or right to start rolling the plane. If you take a look outside, you can see how our attitudes changed, but you can also check your instruments for the details. As a general rule, you always want to keep your turns under 30 degrees. At the top of your attitude indicator, there's a series of notches representing 10 degrees each. 
Use them to control your roll. Notice the more you turn, the more you need to pull back on the yoke to maintain altitude. When you're rolling out, you'll need to do the opposite. Roll and push at the same time. The more you know about the main attitudes of flight, the closer you get to that pilot state of mind. So keep practicing, and whenever you're done, pass me the controls. take you a mile. A mile of runway will take you anywhere. Taking off isn't hard, but there are a few key points to remember. First, we always take off into the wind, which won't be an issue on a calm day like today. Second, before we enter a runway, we always make sure it's clear. Good, no cross traffic. Go ahead and taxi into position. The rudder pedals should make steering the plane pretty easy. Drag the trim down when you need to set the nose up. 
Drag it up to set the nose down. Try adding trim to keep us at 5,500 feet without increasing throttle. If you feel our pitch slipping and need to get back to the proper attitude, don't worry. Just pull on the yoke, then dial in the right trim. The way I was taught, when you adjust the trim, you make rough changes at first to remove pressure on the yoke, then small adjustments to find the perfect setting to keep your desired attitude. That's the key to straight and level flight. It saves you from constantly pushing or pulling on the yoke. And that gives you more time to enjoy the ride. If you want more practice using the trim, go for it. Whenever you're ready to pass the controls, I'll be here. Traffic pattern. 
follows a 1,000 foot altitude around the main runway. By the time we're through here, you'll know how to complete the full run from takeoff to landing. So let's get started. Thank <laughs> you. 
way to stick the landing. Now, just apply the brakes to slow your roll. And make sure you don't stop on the runway, of course. If other planes are looking to land, we've got to move. Take one of the taxiways on the right. Good job, as an old instructor said to me. Not only did you not die, you're really learning to fly. It's time, your first solo flight. I'll be watching from the ground in radio contact if you need me, but something tells me you won't. Your goal is to complete Sedona's left-hand traffic pattern on your own. Remember what we covered in our previous sessions, and you'll be just fine. Good luck. See you on the other side.
Great job. There's always room for improvement, that's life, right? But you did it all on your own. You're on your way to becoming one hell of a pilot. I've always said, flying is freeing. Open skies, endless possibilities. But to fully enjoy it, you need to be prepared. We're going to focus this lesson on navigation prep and procedures, the fundamentals of getting from point A to point B. Step one, putting some distance between us and the ground. Flagstaff Pulliam Airport. 
An easier way to navigate is to follow identifiable landmarks like highways. And just so happens, we have one below us. Flagstaff Pulliam Airspace. Next step is setting up to enter the traffic pattern. We've got clearance to enter the downwind leg and land on runway 21. Keep your attitude, then follow the standard pattern. to a cruise attitude and reduce your power. should be at idle now, so you're losing altitude while maintaining cruise attitude. a landing on runway 21 and we'll call this one done.
successful VFR flight in the books. Not bad. Not bad at all. Are you ready for this? You are going solo on a full VFR flight. You'll be departing Flagstaff Pulliam Airport, handling every navigational step on your way to Sedona. From takeoff to touchdown, it's all you. Don't worry though, even if I'm not with you in the cockpit, I'm always with you in spirit.
welcome back, and well done. It's clear you're ready to fly anywhere on your own now. So, where to next? Some people say the sky's the limit. I say, it's just the beginning. <laughs>